Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I am sharing with you another Use It Up July project. And I thought I would kind of show you some stamping and using some Distress Oxide ink pads. Hey, if you're new to me, please uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell that's at the top of the screen, and also give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. That's how I get seen by other people. And of course, if you have any comments, let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. And if you have any questions, ask those as well. Well, let's get started here. What I've got is a couple of stamps from my Beeline Designs stamp company that a friend of mine owns and I now offer in my shop, pretty much exclusive on the internet. And I thought I would show you some different journaling cards here. So let's kind of get started. What I've got is a piece of craft cardstock. I'm using pieces that were already pre-cut in my stash. I do a lot of things for canvas court brands, tattered angels. And sometimes when I go visit them, they have stacks of paper that was cut for whatever project that they did for something they sold. And these are kind of cast offs. Well, they become perfect elements in junk journals. And what I thought I would do with this is I'm going to use the Gaudi alphabet stamp and we're going to stamp on top of this and we're going to use some distress inks as well. I'm just grabbing a piece of paper to put underneath so that when I do blending, it doesn't end up all over my desktop. All right, I've got a scrap of paper that I've torn and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay it onto my page or my journal card. I'm gonna use some distressed ink walnut stain and we're going to give the appearance of sand by blending onto that page. And because I've got that torn edge we're going to get some lines see there and i'm going to just flip this around let's go this way i'm going to flip it around a couple of times and keep doing this until i have what i consider the area of sand just kind of making some layers so this is going to be the bottom i was doing it upside down but i just wanted the bottom here to have a little bit darker color next i'm going to take the mermaid lagoon distress oxide ink and a blender tool and I'm going to blend on here to kind of give it could be considered the sky it could be considered water it just depends upon what uh, your vision of the card is and I'm just blending over it you can keep adding as many colors or layers as you like I'm just going to use one layer of that all right, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got some Dazzling Diamonds Tattered Angels Glimmer Mess. And Distress Oxide reacts with water. Well, there's water in, in Dazzling Diamonds. And so I'm just going to shake this up and I'm going to spritz it, but kind of half pumping the um, plunger so that I'm getting a little more liquid and it's going to start reacting a little bit. I can also, if it's wet enough, I can tilt the page a little bit. And then I'm going to use my heat tool and dry it. So you kind of see the sparkle on there. So you get a little bit of sparkle on what would be the sky or water and a little bit in the sand. I've already taken the alphabet stamp and I spelled out the word beach. I'm just using an acrylic block to hold it in place. And then I've got my Ranger Archival Black ink. I'm going to ink up the stamp and I'm going to stamp it somewhat over in the lower right corner. I'm going to go ahead and add some distress ink around the whole edge of this little card. So there's the first card. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just using a couple of colors of ink and then the rubber stamp. So let's do the next one. All right, for this one, I'm going to use the Mermaid Lagoon again. And I'm going to just put a little bit of color in the center of the card. And I'm not really worried that you can kind of see the little circle marks on there. If your blending tool is really saturated, you'll be able to keep working that. I think that's enough for now. What I'm going to do next is I've got a couple of the fern stamps from Beeline Designs. I haven't even used this one yet because I'm going to try to alternate it with the medium and the small. And there's also 
a large. So there's three different sizes and there's even a bundle for the fern stamp in my shop. I didn't have my stamp uh, ready. Okay, so now I've got some forest moss, evergreen bough, and bundle sage. I'm going to start with the lighter color and I'm going to use the little stamp and add a few stampings around the perimeter of this card. And I'll rotate it and turn the stamp different directions. Okay, so I kind of got a few different designs there. Then I'm going to grab one of the larger ones. I'm going to ink up the evergreen bow and fill in here and there. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean off my stamp by stamping it off. And then I'm going to grab the forest moss and stamp in the other areas. Okay, I've gone all the way around. I'm going to pick up the bundled sage and a blending tool. I'm going to blend all the way around the outside edge. I think I need a couple of more of the darker forest moss. I'm going to use the smaller fern stamp and add that in in a couple of spots. All right, I'm going to use some Distress Ink around the outside edge walnut stain. Next, I'm just going to take a, this is a bottle that had some tattered angels in it and I just added some water to it and I'm going to just kind of spritz this in fact if you want it to drip you can put some in your hands and drop some water on there so it's going to change a little bit how this looks I'm going to dry this I just like the way it just alters that card just a little bit by using the blending doing the different colors of stamps the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a little word it's what I call white words on black and I think I think I like this one it's live each day I'm going to put some distress inks on the outside edge it is black ink printed on white paper so you'll have a little bit of a white edge and I think this will be just as cute right here across the bottom so I'm just going to use some Maline's tacky glue and put a little bit of a glue on the back side so there's that card. Kind of cute, huh? All right, for our last card, again, it's just another piece of cardstock that I have. I've got the palm tree stamp and I've got my Versamark. You can also use whatever embossing ink, a wet ink that'll hold embossing powder. So I'm just gonna ink this up. I'm gonna stamp it in the uh, bottom center of the card. And then I have some black embossing powder. I'm going to take the card and set it inside. You can sprinkle it over onto another piece of paper, however you like to use your embossing powder. I'm just tapping off any excess that might be on there. And then we're going to heat this. And the key to embossing is to emboss it so that it stays raised and shiny and doesn't sink down into the page. So watch it closely as it transforms from a dull to a nice and shiny image. See how it's starting to transform? It's getting a little bit shinier. I may have overdone it because sometimes I can't see black very well. It seems to, uh, you can't tell if it's still embossing or not. I'm letting it cool off before I touch it. Okay, I think I got most of the powder done. I'm going to lay it onto my scrap piece of paper again. And this time I'm going to grab some carved pumpkin and a blending tool. And I'm going to start in the upper corner. We're kind of kind of creating a sunset, if you will. Okay, and then I'm going to grab fossilized amber. and blend and then I'm going to grab the bundled sage again and you just keep blending until you get the variation that you like on there I'm going to grab the water again and spritz it on top let it drop let it pool in places 
So it's going to change it just a little bit. I want to clean up a little bit where the um, Distress Ink is on top of the embossing. So I'm just going to go in here and mop it just a little bit with a towel. You could use a baby wipe, a paper towel. That kind of just picks it up off of there. I'm going to dry this with a heat tool. And then I'm going to use some blending, or excuse me, Distress Ink around the edges. And then I've got Always Dream Big. So I think that'll look good right across here. So we'll glue that down on the corner bottom. Well, there are our three journal cards that I made today. I hope you like seeing this kind of a project. Which just quick, get in there, make a quick journal card or element to add to your junk journal. If you like this video, again, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And, of course, comment below if you have any comments or questions. Check the description box for links to the products that I used here today. And, of course, Thank you so very much for watching. Remember that I'm live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time and Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, thanks for watching. Have a fabulous day. Lots of love to you. Bye, everybody.